Hey everyone, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today I'll be discussing another record to die for and this time it's going to be Cafe Blue by Patricia Barber. Um, I started that series several months back. I'm gonna leave a link above for the playlist for it. There are four titles in that series and I suggest you check out those reviews. Among them are Belafonte Sings the Blues, the famous Le Cid Ballet music on EMI, um, Ray Brown's Solar Energy, another great jazz album, and uh, an instrumental album called White Winds by Andreas Vollenweider. All records that I found musically and sonically superb, and this one joins the list t today, so I'll tell you all about it in a second. Um, before I get started, if you haven't already, we did pass 6,000 subscribers. We're working our way towards seven. Um, if you like what I do, please give me a thumbs up hit the thumbs up button below, um, hit like, subscribe, and notification, and you'll be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up. And you'll be helping out the channel greatly. Um, speaking of support, I haven't mentioned it in a few videos, but I am running a fundraiser. It's called Buy Me A Coffee. It is listed below. There's a link there for it. And it's a service where you can donate to creators to help them offset costs of running a channel. Um, my particular need is an editing laptop. I have, um, I had an editor <laughs> and he is leaving. So um, he is um, moving on and I'm going to take over the editing. Um, my current uh, equipment does not handle 4K video necessary to create this content. So if you'd like to help out the channel in a small way, you can donate anything you like at the link below. Buy me a coffee. Thank you for doing that. So Cafe Blue is a 1994 release. It was originally came out on CD. Um, it was subsequently released in truncated form on LP uh, with the tracks rearranged. And from what I've read, Patricia Barber was not very happy with that edition. Uh, not because of the sound, but because uh, some tracks were cut um, and the order was rearranged. Um, in 2011, this reissue came out um, on Premonition Records. It's a two by two by 33. There is also 45 RPM editions from um, Impex and from MoFi. So there are lots of editions to choose from. This is the only one I've heard and I can only keep my remarks to this particular edition. I bought this in 19, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2011 when it came out. Um, it And I played it a few times at that time, but it wasn't really something that I was uh, already familiar with and had had to have. I bought it more on its audiophile reputation. Um, like a lot of LPs at that time, um, Breaking Silence was another one. You know, I would see reviews for it. I saw um, uh, them, the albums listed in the audiophile um, websites. And I would pick up things just based on why they're being hyped by the audiophile companies. And this was one of them. And I remember playing it a few times and liking it, but not really getting deeply into it at that time. Uh, over subsequent uh, years and many system upgrades, I've come to really appreciate what this album is. And I just gotta share it with you because it really is to me a record to die for. It's not a record that I would ever wanna be without. And it's one of the best sounding records I've ever had in my collection. Um, the album is characterized by, by Patricia Barber's songwriting and masterful piano playing and expressive vocal delivery. It's a very atmospheric production, wide open space, um, an excellent um, sense of re re reverb and wonderful on point playing from the drums, the bass, and the guitar, as well as the piano. It's such an unusual sounding record and it really is disarming the first time you hear it. Absolutely enthralling, um, starting with the very first track, which can which does not vary on the, on the different editions. Um, it always starts with this track and it's a stunning track. It's called What a Shame, uh, an original composition by Barber. Um, I made some notes of the various tracks. Uh, I'll, I'll list a few uh, sonic qualities of, um, of some of my favorites. 
which is basically all of them. But no, I'll, I'll just kind of condense this a little bit. But what a shame uh, is very hushed, wide open, atmospheric sound. Um, the percussion is bongos, and you can hear very clearly the hit on the skin, the decay of the of the bongo, and it gives the illusion of this vast space. Um, the cymbals decay very, very gradually and sound very realistic. The guitar on this is very unusual. Um, all throughout the album, the guitar is a kind of a muted sound. It's not direct, except in a couple of cuts where um, it's like a classical guitar and that you hear more detail on it, but um, it's a hypnotic vibe throughout the, this track and it's just thrilling to hear. It's become a demo favorite at audio salons everywhere forever and uh, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Very cryptic lyrics, very dark. Um, her lyrics are kind of a thinking man's uh, kind of lyric. Um, it's hard to describe them, but it's uniquely her own. And uh, I think a lot of that comes from her background in philosophy. So it's it's a very interesting um, sonic and uh, musical experience. Uh, Morning Grace was a very interesting cut. This is This takes a piano line that it reminded me, when I first heard it, it reminded me of like Steve Reich or some of the other minimalists in that it had a re repeating piano um, motif that just keeps going throughout the, uh, the track. Also, the guitars do the same thing towards the end. Uh, it's like a pulse. So the piano and guitar are just kind of like on this rhythmic pulse. And the end is a spacey jam with this haunting, wailing vocal. And it's, it's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Just a beautiful, beautiful sounding piece of art. And that's really what this album is. It's a piece of art. The Thrill is Gone is a little more traditional. It has a wonderful bass line. Very clear, easy to follow vocal. Uh, excellent brushwork and drums. It's got that smoky 3 a.m. jazz club feel. I uh, absolutely love that track. The piano and the bass work together and it's magic. It's almost like a new sound, the way they work together. Um, Romanesque is uh, a wordless vocal and a delicate classical sounding guitar. I wouldn't say it's acoustic. I think it's just a classical sounding guitar and just beautiful again she's really good at wordless vocals um, and what a voice it really carries through this song um, yellow car is kind of an improv improvisation sounding a uh, track with excellent drums everything is just beautiful free and exploratory um, Hard to describe it much more than that, but another uh, great track was um, Inchworm. Um, and I made a note here. Inchworm kind of seems like I, I pictured a sonic canvas and it's sort of painting with the sound on the canvas and arranging it in this artistic way. It has bongos. It has a great bass line that takes you on a journey wonderful wonderful guitar sound very very interesting marvelous marvelous sound uh great great cut um the next cut was one that really stood out to me at the beginning and i've only come to love it even more and that is a remake of ode to billy joe bobby gentry's song and that is very very spare um, bass and voice to start with just amazing amazingly cl clear sound um there are also finger snaps in this so it's bass guitar and finger snaps and when you hear those finger snaps they like drift off into this long decay just just audiophile ear candy is the kind of a way i like to describe stuff like that 
those sonic effects just make this record very, very special. Um, and she really brings out the words much more than Bobby Gentry did. So you can really kind of focus on what the song's about. And it kind of fits in with her, her, her view, her worldview. Um, Too Rich for My Blood is probably my favorite song on the album. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous texture, incredible bass line, haunting lyrics, a wonderful vocal, beautiful drum fills, cymbal work, and the climax is this chilling vocal work, wordless vocal work that just, just is incredible. I, was, I, I had goosebumps all over me when I was listening to that. Beautiful. Um, another cover that she does on this is A Taste of Honey. Um, it features that classical guitar sound again. Ultra clean vocal, beautiful space and atmosphere. Uh, amazing, amazing. I think that's, those are my highlights, but there's our other tracks that are just as good and just as interesting. And I was riveted throughout the whole album. Um, this is an album that made my system sound so good. Uh, it made me realize that excellent software is the answer. You know, so many times we struggle trying to make mediocre recordings sound good and they can only sound so good. And this album is a showpiece for that kind of thing. It really shows off your system. The sh system shows off the record. Your system will never sound better than when you play this record. It's, it's pretty special and it's a record to die for. And that's why I placed it here today. I think I've given you kind of an idea of what to expect on this. Um, do check it out on, on streaming. The Spotify version I listened to last night was very good as well. Um, it's in a different order, so I guess that was the original order of the CD. But no matter, um, I'm used to it this way. I can highly recommend this remix. Jim Anderson did this remix at, um, at Capitol Studios. And an interesting thing I read about it was um, he used a natural reverb of one of the reverb chambers um, at Capitol, which is uh, an older technique rather than using a, some kind of plug-in or, or something like that. And it gives the album extra depth and my mystery. And it's beautiful, beautiful. The pressing by RTI is incredible, just incredible. They were doing such good work at that time. These records are absolutely flawless, and I can highly recommend this version. Um, I haven't yet heard the QRP press version, but I have no doubt that it sounds very, very good too, and it's probably equal to this. So that is my take on Ca Cafe Blue. Let me know what you think about this album. Um, I, I absolutely adore it, and I would never want to be without it. But I'm very curious to hear what other th others think about this. And if you have any of the other versions, please chime in too. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.